Okay, so today we're going to continue on with our animal object and play around with this and create a bunch of animals uh, and then start to play around with uh, how we would organize those and, and uh, put them into an array and search for animals that have certain properties, things like that. So let's... Uh, Let's get rid of all of my code here. And we'll start with our main program now that's going to utilize my classes above. All right. So I want to create a bunch of animals, uh, and I need to store them somewhere. And so this is. This is uh, maybe my zoo, all right? So I'm going to have a zoo that's going to be an array. I'm going to keep an array of animals. So that's a collection of animal objects that I'm going to have in my zoo, all right? So uh, let's create a bunch of them. Um, let's do a uh, let's do a loop like this. So. I can create a bunch of them that have the same properties, or basically the same properties. So let's create uh, a new, how, do I, how would I create a new zebra object? Okay, so I'm going to have something, and we're going to create a zoo, I mean, sorry, uh, a zebra dot new, and it has three different values that I'm going to pass to it, its name, which is uh, zebra, <coughs> and then I'm going to pass in this num, which is going to be from 0 to 10. Okay, so this will be ze zebra 0, zebra 1, zebra 2, etc. Okay, just so I can create a bunch of them all at once. And then I'm going to have uh, their color. Let's make them all black and white. I mean, that's not too bad. And their stripes, let's make that variable so that it's different, so we have different test data to play with. Uh, the stripes are going to be, we could take the number and we could multiply it by some random number. How about that? Uh, or we could just say, I want a random number in the range of uh, 20 to 100 stripes. All right, so no zebra is going to have less than 20. And no zebra is going to have more than 100 stripes. So that creates what? This line, this type of code here creates what for me? A new zebra object, an object from the zebra class. So instead of assigning it to a variable, I can just say, let's push this. Thank you, uh, RubyMine. I can push that into my zoo. Right? So this creates a new object. It's going to push it into my zoo, and my zoo is going to grow and have a bunch of zoo animals in it. All right. So, if I were to then uh, let's just put out my zoo .inspect and see what I got. All right. So, I've got one zebra object here. I've got an array of zebra objects. The first zebra has 60 stripes. He's named Zebra Zero, and he's black and white. My second zebra has 24 stripes, and his name is Zebra 1, and his color is black and white, etc. Um, because of the way they were initialized, it's an interesting question. Uh, when I create my zebra, my stripes instance variable is created first. Okay. Then I call my super, which which creates the name and the color. So I look up here, and my name and my color are created, but my color is first here in my attribute accessor list. I believe that that's why. Let's change it. It's a. It doesn't matter because who cares what what order they're in? But that's probably why. Yes. See that. Doesn't matter. I'm never gonna look. I'm never gonna use this inspect. I'm gonna use the specific. I want to say, 
a zebra dot name, and I don't care if that's the first, second, or third instance variable. It doesn't matter, right? Because I'm I'm naming it name or stripes or I don't I'm going straight to that object's property. I don't care that it's the third property or the second property. Right, they're all named properties. Right, right, good. But that's why I mean that's an interesting question. I've never had that question before. All right, so I've got a bunch of of uh, animals. I can say put zoo dot count. What is that going to tell me? How many animals I've got? I should have ten animals in my zoo. So that is how you would do the book uh, the book class, except that I'm not going to do it in a ten dot times. I'm going to read from a file, get the data, split it, and then use those data points to create my new book every time with pages instead. So and then push them into my zoo. So my zoo has all of uh, all of them. What type of variable is this? Now this is part of the quiz. What part of the ver what type of variable is that? No. <coughs> it's not an array at all. No, it's not a zoo object either. Okay, good. Because everything in Ruby is an object, that's a very safe assumption. Let's look at what it is, okay? If I call the dot class on it, it's not a string, almost never is a string. It's a zebra object, right? It was not a zoo object, though, and it's not an array. When I index it, this is whatever is stored in the zero element of my array, right? Which happens to be an entire zebra. Then it's what? It's an array, right? Just an array. Just an array. So that's part of the quiz. You have to figure out what it really is because once I index it, it's no longer an array. It's whatever is stored in that element. If you want to open IRB and do it, sure. Yeah, wait, there's a quiz. It's going to be on the 8th, so during pre reg day. All right, so zoo sub zero. So if this is a zebra, I can do zebra type stuff with it, right? What can I do? Let's say, how can I tell? I can tell it to speak. Very good. I can say, print my, uh, speak my, my zoo guy. All right? So my zebra says, hello, my name is zebra zero Mufasa. Right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Right here? Sure. I can yeah, say, give me a random of 0 to what? Why put a hard code in there? Very good. So <laughs> when I run this, I get zebra 7 made a noise. If I run it again, I get zebra 0. So that's good. So now you understand that I'm indexing my zoo array. That gives me a zebra object, and he speaks. OK? Everybody got that so far? How would I go and print out um, all, of my, all of my zebras? I want an inventory of all of my zebras. I need a loop. Zoo.each. Do. And what is inside of my loop here? What is? Animals. It's an animal. So because later on I'm going to add more than zebras to my, my guy. These would actually be zebra objects so far. So I would, I would, I'm going to call it an, a single animal because it's it, it, uh, ultimately from my animal class. I'm going, to have, I'm going to add some hyenas and I'm going to add some other stuff to my to my zoo, right? So inside of this, right, we need some bears and stuff. So how would I print out uh, a record of all of my animals? Puts, good. 
animal.name, and then let's let's put it all in one string so it's easier. Animal.name, and I might uh, have some spaces here and a animal dot color and optionally animal dot come on animal dot stripes all right so that's going to loop through and print me a nice little report oops it can't speak Why did I get that? All right, so that's a good good one. It got it on this line. I did this on purpose, just so you see that. So this is the line. At some point, it found a nil for speak, right? It says there's no method for speak. So at some point in time, this resulted in a nil. Okay? So at some point in time, my random number went out of the range of 0 to 10. It is possible. Very good. So my, my index actually goes from 0 to 9, not 0 to 10. So at some points, I get 10 here. So I want to subtract 1 from this. All right, that fixes that problem. Different issue, 55. Uh, zoo dot each animal, and it worked. It printed zebra nine out of ten times, right? And then I got uh, what is my undefined method stripes for a zebra? Is it called stripes? Oh, why can I not print out the stripes? Very good. Wow, you guys are sharp. So there's, there's no getter for stripes. There's no method. Even though I have an instance variable called stripes, I never defined a getter for my stripes. I can't use that in the outside world. So what's a quick way to define a getter? Accessor. All right, Atra accessor. Maybe I want to change. I don't think he's ever going to change his stripes. Does a lion change his stripes? He doesn't have stripes. <laughs> Does <laughs> a tiger change his stripes? <laughs> so we'll make it an natural reader so that they can't change it, and we'll call it stripes. Okay, so now that creates a getter for my stripe instance variable. There we go. Look at that. So I've got all my zebras printed out one at a time and all of their stripes or pages of the book. See how easy that was? I didn't tell them to speak. All I did, I only, only spoke one of my guys here. Now, if I want them all to speak, I might have another method, another piece of code. And instead of uh, printing out the inventory, I might say animal.speak. So every one of my animals is going to speak. Hello, my name is Zebra Zero Mufasa. Don't you like just saying that? Mufasa. Ooh, say it again. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, where were we? So how how would I? I have this array. How would I print out only my zebras that have? Uh, 50 stripes or more. I want to herd them all, and I'm going to do some zebra breeding. So I want to get more stripes. So I want only want I only want my zebras that have more than 50 stripes, and the rest I'm going to let die off. Right? I'm going to have some really stripy zebras. So how would I look and print out all of my zebras that are have a different have stripes greater than 50? Zoo each dot zoo dot each do. I need a loop. I get my animal going through here. My each does this already. If very good. I'm looking. I'm doing the getter. 
greater than 50, then I'm going to print out my animal and we'll, we'll call the identify method just to call something different. Uh, up here I wrote this that just says my name is whatever and I'm a whatever. And that, that'll, that should print out that he's a zebra. We could. There you go. Good. So I printed out, I, I have some, some zebras that are over 50 stripes. See how that worked? I'm checking at property of my animal against some math here to filter out only those animals that have certain properties. And, and then I'm printing them out. All right. So we'll do some more of this tomorrow, but I wanted to add a, a class, uh, I mean a, a, a method to let itself, let the animal print itself out that's useful for storing to a file. All right? And let's make this comma delimited. I'm not going to use tab. <laughs> that would be writing your code for you. But so let's write a method called two comma or two CSV, comma separated values, right? Uh, and what would, I, what would I return then? An animal is only one object. So I'm just going to return a string that represents that animal with commas between the properties. That's it. So I'm going to return a string that has their name, comma, at name, because that's my instance variable, and then my uh, color, and my animal doesn't know anything about stripes here, right? So if I want to actually print out uh, the, the, the number of stripes that I have, where would I put that? My zebra class is the only guy that knows about the stripes. So I'm going to override my CSV uh, to CSV. And I'm going to return. Now I can call, just like I did the super, the super calls this animal classes to CSV, which returns part of a string. And I can add to that the next part of the string. So I don't want to duplicate this code. I'm just going to call the super to get my CSV. So super plus, and then I want to add a comma, and the last variable that I'm going to have is stripes. All right. So now, if I wanted to print these all out, uh, I would do the same thing, zoo.each do animal. Um, and then I'm going to call the animals to CSV method on it, which is going to return what? A string. And I need to put that out. In this case, I'm putting it to the screen. You might open the file, print it to the file, close the file instead if you were writing to a file. Look at that. So I've got zebra zero, he's black and white, and he's got 46 stripes. All right, any questions on that? Super will just add, obviously. Well, when I call super, where is it? Where's my super? When I call super, that's calling the two CSV method on the zebra's parent which is the, in the animal class. So we go up to the animal class. We say, OK, where's your 2CSV? All right, here it is. This is returning a string. So it, you can think of that string as replacing this super method. Oh, okay. And that super method now is a string plus another string. Cool. It's super Sorry. darn good stuff. All right, any other questions on that? Uh, today's Wednesday, wow. So tomorrow, 
we'll start, we'll take some of this concept. This is really all you need for the extra credit, the books class extra credit. Um, what we'll do tomorrow is we'll deal with two classes and we'll create a zoo class that has different properties. All right? So that's it for today.